So this will be a quick little video where I just want to talk about what the internet is and some basic terms and concepts so that when we're discussing uh, the various concepts of digital marketing, it's really obvious what I'm talking about at times. So what is the internet? Well, the internet is a network of networks, essentially, that links together a variety of different devices. And these could be desktop computers, laptops, smartphones, uh, Internet of Things type technologies, your refrigerator potentially nowadays, right? And it links those all together into a shared communication platform, one sets of protocols that they can all talk to each other, right? And it allows the sharing information between users, uh, which are sometimes in, in their devices, which are sometimes referred to as nodes, right? I want to make it perfectly clear that the World Wide Web, the, the, the web that we surf, is a subset of the internet. It's an application layer riding on top of the internet. It is not the internet itself, right? The World Wide Web is not the internet, and the internet is not the World Wide Web. Instead, it is a particular way of talking through the internet that allows, that caters specifically to the sharing of content on websites, right? And there are things out there that you use on a regular basis that may never actually talk to the World Wide Web. In fact, some um, apps, for instance, may never actually interact with the World Wide Web whatsoever, but instead use other methods of communicating. Links on the World Wide Web are the way we connect documents together on the web. So when you click on a link, you are essentially telling your computer that you want the content that that link represents, right? And those links include what's known as a URL or a uniform resource locator, right? And this is a very specific way of specifying the particular piece of content. And you may have seen this before as something like HTTP colon slash slash www.ncsu.edu. That is a uniform resource locator, HTTP telling the protocol that we're using, the hypertext transfer protocol, and www.ncsu.edu telling what piece of content we want to retrieve with that particular uh, protocol, right? So given those that, that description, what are those concepts? So that URL, that whole HTTP, that is the whole URL, that's the Uniform Resource Locator. It includes within it the domain name. Now when I set, type that into my browser, say on my desktop or on my laptop, my browser contacts a specific server, computer server, called a domain name server. That dom It says, hey, this person wants this piece of content. Where is this content located? Rather than telling the computer exactly where it's located, what the domain name server does is it gives it an address, an IP address, typically in many cases a set of four numbers separated by dots. Those, that set of numbers the, my computer can then look up where that website is physically located. Where is the actual web server that serves up that website? In fact, in many cases, it doesn't actually tell it a particular server. It tells it a group of servers, one of a group of servers that serves up that page. So that what, when I type in www.ncsu.edu, I am giving a certain, my computer the ability to get a piece of information that gives it a physical address, they can then look up that physical address and ask that physical address for the content of that data. It's kind of like if I ask, if you ask your friend for their phone number, right, you're translating from that person's name to that number, you can then call that number to contact that person, right? Um, the domain is the unique name that identifies an internet site. For example, that www.ncsu.edu. And let's talk a little bit about breaking down that domain name, right? So domain names actually carry a lot of information. There is a subdomain. So for instance, www is a subdomain of www.ncsu.edu, just as MBA is a subdomain of mba.ncsu.edu, right? So it's part of that larger domain of ncsu.edu, right? The top level domain is that thing at the very end. It's something that's controlled outside of that organization. So NC State controls all of the ncsu.edu domains but they don't control .edu. .edu is the top level domain in mba.ncsu.edu, and that is actually controlled by another organization, right? That allows you the ability to have those names, and you have to go through something called a domain registrar to get access to a domain within that particular top level domain. 
Finally, there's a directory, and the directory can happen after the domain name, right? The main sets of the domain name, and they specify a particular piece of content that you want off of that server. So we can go to the mba.ncsu.edu web server and ask specifically for the academics directory, and it will give us the content that was in that content. And we can even go academics slash online programs, et cetera, et cetera, right? We can build on this. So hopefully this gives you some basic terminology as we go through digital marketing so you can start to understand what the different speech, what the, how these communication protocols work and how we use them to kind of direct consumers to different parts of the web as we want them to do so in order to maximize on some sort of digital marketing.